It is the Riot Podcast. Good Monday, April 3rd show to you. Uh, Isaiah, this is this is a podcast. Mm-hmm. This is a real podcast. And you know how I know it's a real podcast? How so? With real listeners. Because we got a real review. Oh, did we? Yeah, we got a review. Is it a good review or a bad review? It is a good review. It's from uh, Tamara, although she does have the screen name or like the title of her thing says uh humagus johnson i don't know what that means <laughs> but she gave us a five-star review where she says listen you won't regret it i've been listening to this podcast for years and every single day makes me laugh until it hurts you make her laugh until it hurts that's they, pretty good they talk about all sorts of topics and it's such a wonderful podcast they are very interactive, and it's an easy listen. I wish I could give it more than five stars. What a great review. That is that is beautiful. And that's the most recent review we have. That's a good review to be sitting at the top. Yeah, that's I right. like that one. That's, I, I almost don't want to tell people to go review the podcast more because then it would, it would knock that one off of the, Push the that first one, one you would see when you look at the reviews. But then again, if you can write an even better one and also give five stars, I'll take it. That's a give good way Tamara, to do it. Give Tamara a run for her money. True. So that's how I, that's a, that's a reminder. You know, sometimes we do this show and you just never know. You just you know? forget. You do forget. Uh, but there's a reason we're putting this out there. That is, that is people a, like that's Tamara. a good reason for Miss Tamara. Yeah. I'm up for it. I'm always up for a good review. It makes me feel better about myself. I love that. Yeah. It does make me think though that every time I leave a review, it's always bad. I've got it's a bad review. Me. You've got a Yesterday. bad review? What TR. You left a bad review for Texas Road. I didn't leave a bad review, but I can leave one right now. Well, how did bad that... review for TR? You don't and leave I love bad TR. reviews for Texas Road. I love TR. You guys all know I'm a big advocate for yeah. old Texas Road. It must be real bad. Though. It was bad. I wait. So this is. It all starts. It's just me, my mom, my dad. Yeah. We get seated right away. No big deal. It's pretty busy. I mean, it's a Sunday afternoon. Pretty busy in there. But at the same time, it's always quick. They're good. Yeah. They're always good. It's the same location I always go to. Mm. They're always stellar. My server, she was fantastic. I'll give her, I forget what her name is. I think it was Kristen or something. Okay. She was really good. Sounds like a server. Because she was coming around because she knew how bad it was. How long we had waited. And oh. guess what? You know what the kicker was? What it's one thing is one thing to wait a long time at yeah. TR. Uh-huh. But you but I got the food. The food was good. Okay. Okay. Good. So the food was good. Yeah. It's always good. Yeah. The food was good. We just waited a really long time. Which is, yet again, for me, I'm hanging out with my mom and dad on Sunday. Yeah. I don't have anything going on. Not a big deal. We weren't starving or anything. And you would so think. So then why are you leaving a bad review? But listen, usually when you wait at TR for a long time, it's not a big deal. Yeah. Because what do you always have? You've got rolls. Oh. No rolls. They didn't give you rolls? Did you ask for rolls? We asked for rolls. And they said. The roll machine. I don't even know how there is a roll machine. Yeah. Broken. Well, that's that's unacceptable. Unacceptable. But they did. And yet again, this is what I do for TR. You know what? They were trying. Uh-huh. They brought around loaded fries instead. Oh. Which, pretty good. Yeah. They were solid, but. Did they comp you the fries? They did. They comped the fries. Nice. Just like they would the And rules. you can't be so upset? Yes, but it was just a, it was just not my typical TR experience. Did they have the bags of peanuts? I know they don't just have the peanuts They had bags of peanuts, did yes. Did you grab some of those? We had some of the bags of peanuts. Okay. So I don't see what there's a complaint about. But I mean, we waited for so long. I mean, if you just wait a little long time at restaurants, yeah, that's you. You can complain there. So how many out of five stars then? It was a probably how many for stars TR. Does that lose? Yeah, it was a two and a half experience for sure. Food was so good, but for TR standards, they have higher standards wow. for me. Probably. They, and you think about the rolls, like why are you coming to Texas Roadhouse? The rolls are a one big of, part of it. It's one of the top reasons. It's one of the top reasons you're going. If they had the rolls there and we had to wait as long, not a big deal. But not having the rolls, and yet again, they did a good job. Uh-huh. I'm not upset with the customer service. It's just it was kind of crappy. Mm. That they had no rolls, and we waited did so long. Did they have an excuse for you besides, obviously, the roll machine was down, but, like, for the rest of the food taking forever? They said that they had some some new people back there. Uh, well. That's what Kristen said. Oh, blame the new people. Blame the new guy. Yeah, so. throw them under the bus. Good old Johnny. He's brand new. He doesn't know yeah. what he's doing yet. I'm like, it was a bad just experience at OTR. Time. Be patient with But him. you know what? I will go back. Because of even though they gave me a bad experience, they still tried to make it good mm. by giving me, they, they comped those, they comped those fries, the loaded fries, yeah. comped those, like they were trying, but it's just not quite up to the TR par. I you think know? 
I think that'd be a good review for our show, even though we might give you a bad experience. We're trying. We're still trying. Goodness gracious, we're just trying. We're not yeah. giving you the nice cinnamon roll, like those those perfect rolls. We might not deliver the rolls every time. We're trying time. with the loaded fries. Like we're trying to give you something. We're doing our best. Uh, and we got some new people here because Nikki's not in. Nikki's so not in. Isaiah kind of counts as a new person. I'm the new chef we'll in throw, the back that's making this thing take forever. Throw you under the bus. All right. Well, uh, enjoy the show. It's uh, We tried today. We and, tried hard. And leave a nice review regardless. You won't hear a show like this anywhere else. And that's probably for the best. The worst of the riot. Radio U. Uh, I was receiving a lot of pressure over the weekend to add a new member to the family. We're talking a dog. Oh, you're, you're talking the dog thing again. Yeah, I almost, uh, well, I don't, almost is a big word. But I was getting a lot of pressure to uh, to pick up a new pup from over Angela. The weekend. From Angela, my wife, uh, but actually, really from all sides. I was the the holdout on this dog thing, which makes it feel like it's going to happen. But I am steadfast that we're not adding this dog to the oh, family. Oh, you're for sure adding the dog. But uh, here's here's how it all went down. Saturday, a group of us hanging out. One of the things we did. Swung into one of the pet stores, just, you know, looking dangerous around, game browsing, uh, Bad idea. but, uh, you know, the people at the pet store, they've heard that before. Mm -hmm. And so they, they pull out the cutest Bernie's mountain dog. Oh my goodness. Yeah. So that's not a small addition to your house either. No, it's not. It's now, I mean, now it is it's still a puppy. Yeah. Still a puppy. For about six months, it'll be a small addition. But uh, we didn't even have to, we didn't say a word. We walk into the pet store. We're looking around. There's all the puppies in their little windows and whatnot. And uh, we didn't have to say a word. This woman brings us a, uh, the Bernie's Mountain Dog puppy. And then, uh, you know, they have those little, like, I don't know if you've ever been to pet stores that have, like, those little cubby kind of mm -hmm. little blocked off oh, areas. I've been there. And she just leads us there. Uh, and what in the world? And drops the dog with it. We did, I did not say. I didn't interact with this woman at all. She just, she just like here and uh, leads us to a room where we are supposed to play with this dog and uh, play. We did with this Bernie's Mountain Dog for a while, and I mean, cute terrible dog. idea. I can't believe you didn't shut that down off the rip. What That's am I? Crazy. How do you say no to that? You just look at him and say. We're not interested. Uh huh. Go elsewhere with your pup. Yeah. Uh. So <laughs> we're here for bird food. Feed. Yeah, that's right. Not. E I'm not a dog person, mm -hmm. which that's also something they've heard before. So we play with this dog for a while, uh, and then it comes the time where they uh, intentionally like vacate the premises because they want you to just keep playing with this dog with as long as possible until it's finally worn you down. So then you're like looking around trying to get rid of the pup and you're uh -huh. like somebody uh somebody I, can help us out over I here. I literally had to pick up the dog and this is a, I mean it was not as heavy, but it's it's a Bernie's Mountain Dog puppy. It's still pretty big. I had to pick this up and carry it throughout the store before I could finally find a person to be like, "Hey, can you take this back?" And they're like, "Oh, take it. What do you mean take it back?" And so, you look like so heartless. Yeah, I really can did. You, uh, can you take this thing away from me? And I will tell you that uh, it came as far as a price was asked. Really? A price was asked. How much was it? A price that was too high for me to pay, uh, and it always will be. But, you know, pictures have circulated. Other family members are getting involved. My mother-in-law, who's not even a dog person. She like, wants a dog. You've got to get the dog. Uh, the dog has been named. You're talking about the dog. You're talking just this Bernie's mountain dog. Yeah. Uh -huh. Not like you guys just add another she's dog. You're saying, talking about that dog. No. She said she saw the pictures and stuff, and she said, you guys, you got to get that dog. That's a big dog. And a dog, uh, the, a, a, uh, the dog has been named, even though we don't own it, and there's no intention of me buying it and owning it. Uh, it's been named Millie. We've given it the name. I think that's no because way. I think that's because it costs a million dollars. Millie. Yeah. So I'm that's not a good dog name. I'm holding out. Uh, Isaiah, I need you to help me stay strong. That this dog is not coming into my home. I'm all. The, the, Dang, I can't decide if I want to if I want to try to encourage you or uh, just work against you. The fear of the dog is already enough trouble. I can't add a rambunctious puppy. It's going to be the size of a house. I was going to say, the Bernese Mountain Dog thing, that's a, that's a big... That's an undertaking. That's a big pop. But it's not happening. This is Radio U's Worst of the Riot. Uh, Isaiah, have you, uh, have you heard about the salmonella outbreak 
I it's, think I read something about this. I mean, you are the newsman here. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, maybe you should put this in your news that the CDC, the Center for Disease Control, has put out a warning regarding a salmonella outbreak that has regarded uh, that has sickened eleven people. No, eleven. It has sickened people in eleven states over the last couple months. And the warning says this: Stop eating raw cookie dough. We've well, that's heard- not going to happen. Yeah, that's right. We've all heard this before, but uh, this actually makes a lot of sense as I go through here. Uh, they've said the CDC says that twelve people have at least been uh, have at least been confirmed to be a part of this salmonella outbreak. Now they say that means that likely many, many more people have gotten sick as in regards to the same strain, but. Uh, they just, you know, it's not been reported. They haven't been, uh, investigated to make sure they were a part of it. But nevertheless, there's a salmonella outbreak going on and they think that it's tied back to flour. They think flour is the cause of the salmonella outbreak. Bad flour or something? Yeah. They say bad flour because, uh, while most people don't consider flour a raw ingredient in, in, truth it actually is it hasn't been treated to before you cook it in your cookie dough or whatever else you're putting it in it has not yet been treated for uh some things that some germs that can cause food poisoning including Mm. salmonella interesting my overall thoughts on it i would say you know the majority of the things that my life that i find joy in Uh are usually risk taking things or things that aren't good for me you're a bad boy so this is one of those times where the cdc is going to tell me this is probably bad for you Uh you're taking a risk to eat this but at the same time it's just one of those risks you take in your life just for your happiness alone yeah i mean you just have to weigh the costs and benefits is it more important, uh, it does it benefit you more to enjoy the taste of raw cookie dough mm-hmm. than it does uh, the cost of possibly getting salmonella and having food poisoning. Uh, you know, it's it's not likely to kill you. You're not going to die, probably. Probably from cookie dough. Yeah, you wouldn't think, right? Yeah. I mean, I don't know if that's for, for sure true or not. I'll go ahead and just say that now. But at the same time, if you put cookie dough in front of me right now, I'm 100% eating it. Uh, I'm seeing here that 12 people, so it's 12 people in 11 states, and three had to go to the hospital for okay, it. Okay, well, that's kind of serious. I like those odds. Three people went to the hospital? It's kind of bad. In the last- but at the same time, yet again, yet again, if you put it in front of me right now, uh-huh. I'm going to go ahead and eat You're it. You're going to take that chance. Yes, I'm for sure taking the chance because there's not a lot of things in my life that I find a lot of enjoyment in now. Uh, oh, I come, really? I come to work like every know. day. And so when I go home at the end of an end of a hard day, yeah. I want to just be able to eat the cookie dough. I want to be able to eat and just have a happy little night. And you don't need the, the CDC getting their dirty little finger. I mean, no. I mean, their clean fingers. Ruining my Friday night when I want to watch a movie and eat some cookie dough. Like, uh-huh. let me just enjoy something for once. All right. Yeah. If you could just back off a little bit and not get me all tweaked out about some salmonella. It is. Well, you're just going to have this thought floating in the back of your mind, especially when you consider that they're specifically calling out cookie dough because uh, they were able to interview seven individuals who had been affected by the salmonella outbreak. Six out of the seven said that they had had cookie dough. That was the one common ingredient mm. for six out of the seven folks checks out i mean it checks out yeah it sounds like we know the culprit and so now it's just up to you whether you want to take that chance take that risk do you want to get salmonella do you they you know they have recipes for egg free cookie dough just for this very purpose they do yeah sounds like we need flour free cookie dough i'm thinking so but at the end of the day i mean i'm how still much, gonna eat it how much how much could flour add to the taste of cookie dough anyways? Yeah, exactly. I mean, just flour. It's kind of pointless. I think it's more of like a, how the cookie looks uh, yeah, more than how it tastes. Just substitute it with more sugar. There you go. And Double down be, on the sugar. It'll probably be fine. This is the Riot Radio U. The NCAA tournament. I'll actually start with the women's NCAA basketball tournament because a champion was crowned, and that champion is LSU. Isaiah, did you see the drama going down in the women's Final Four? I did. I actually watched the game yesterday. You did. Mm-hmm. It was uh, an instant classic, some might say, uh, where LSU defeated Iowa. Now, if you don't follow women's basketball, which I'll be honest, I didn't 
but uh, I was filled in that Iowa pulled off a pretty significant upset in the final four before the championship game by defeating South Carolina, ending their undefeated season. Yes. So that's pretty huge. Uh, their star player, Caitlin Clark, she went off for over 40 points, which is impressive in any sport, particularly women's basketball. But then she was on the receiving end of some taunting last night. She was, she was angel Reese. Is she the, would you consider her the star player for LSU? Yeah. She's probably like one or two one of on their, their top, team, one of their top players. And she went ahead and hit, uh, hit. Uh, Caitlin Clark of Iowa with the John Cena, you can't see me taunt. That got some people up in arms, very mm-hmm. upset about it. What are you, what's your feelings on the taunting situation? My feelings are Caitlin Clark, the whole tournament was like kind of be like taunting a little bit, but I'm, it wasn't like after the game, uh-huh. after you've already won. It was like during the game, so when I, more which trash is different, talk. Yeah. which is different, I think. Um, and also, she's the best player uh-huh. in the tournament by far. So if when you when you're the best player in the tournament, you it's it's okay to do that stuff. I feel like you get a little bit more leniency. Yeah. Angel Reese is a very good player. I think during the game that's fine. I think after the game, you should just celebrate the national championship with your team probably and not worry about the team that you beat. Well, see, I'm a guy that likes to have fun. Yeah. And I think it's fun to taunt people. You think so? Even after the game, even back in little league, they kicked me out because I kept menacing with other, uh, the other children, even though I never got a hit for a whole season, I'd still taunt them. Yeah. And so that's why they, maybe it's also that I didn't get a hit for a whole season. That could be it too. But they did kick me off the team. Uh, But that's besides the point. I think it's okay. Cause also you don't know, Caitlin Clark, you don't know what kind of taunting she was doing throughout the entire game. And Angel Reese and LSU, they're letting their play speak for itself. And then finally, at the end of the game, it's just like, you know what? One last little jab. Uh, one last little jab. Because they even point out here that Caitlin Clark had uh, handed out this exact taunt against Louisville she did. earlier in the tournament. She did. So uh, you won't see any tears from me over here. Yeah, I would say. And the other thing I'll say, too, Caitlin Clark should have been the most outstanding player of the tournament. It's insane she wasn't. That is egregious. They don't. The most outstanding she, player doesn't necessarily have to be on the championship winning no. team. She like carried the team. She's the only reason people are watching women's basketball right now. For the most part, they got way more viewers than it ever has. Uh-huh. And she dropped forty points the past two games, and then thirty one the game before that. And the person who won it, Angel Reese, yeah, never put up over twenty two. Mm, so that's egre- that's egregious. Questionable for sure. Now, turning our attention to the men's tournament, uh, Saturday night, you did get a great game between Florida Atlantic and San Diego State. I don't know if you saw that one. I watched oh, al- yeah. almost the entire thing, although there was a point in the, for- in the fourth quarter, in the second half, where I think, I don't know how many minutes were left, but Florida Atlantic was up by 14 points, mm-hmm. and it seemed that game over. And then San Diego State started to get to go to the free throw line. And uh, it was so egregious, so just outstanding that uh, San Diego State would miss the second free throw, not intentionally. Every time. They just were not hitting their free throws, which normally would kill a team. But what killed Florida Atlantic was they kept allowing San Diego State to get an offensive rebound off of the free throw, which is unacceptable. Uh, It's astounding you could get to the final four with that kind of play. And uh, Florida Atlantic wound up blowing the lead. An amazing final play from San Diego state. And I don't know if you've seen the footage of like a Florida Atlantic bar in Boca Raton, Florida, uh, where they, of, of the crowd watching the buzzer beater. I can imagine it was sad. Yeah. Sad. And then they look around and then, uh, you know, people are upset and then they realize, Oh yeah, we're in Boca Raton. Let's just walk outside. Yeah. We'll walk outside. Yeah. We'll just, we'll, we'll be okay. Enjoy the warm weather. Uh huh. That we got nothing to be upset about. Florida Atlantic shouldn't, you know, like normally wouldn't make it here anyway. So, Uh, You got a prediction tonight is UConn against San Diego State late for the NCAA title. Who are you picking? UConn. You're picking UConn, huh? I mean, UConn. Going out on a limb. UConn has not been even slowed down the whole tournament. I mean, they have literally rolled every single team they've played. It has not been close once. I think they've won by double digits in every game. Every single game. It's been a pretty incredible run. And nobody's really been talking about it because Uh they're like the most favorite out of these four teams that made it to the Final Four. Yeah. But they are just rolling everyone. If they lose tonight, I would be be pretty shocked. Well, that's why, uh, you know. They're due for a downfall. That's why we play the game. San Diego State, 
you could you tell them Hudson picked them. The riot with Hudson and Nikki on Radio U. Radio U. Isaiah, I don't. I'd be surprised if it appeals to you. Are you a ranch fan? I like ranch. You like ranch, but I know you're not Mr. Ranch. I'm not, like, obsessed with ranch, but I will use it for a myriad of things. I know you're not Mr. Ranch because previously on the show, on a previous episode of The Riot, we uh, had a debate over the best fast food, con- or the not fast food, but just the best condiment, mm-hmm. the most essential condiment. Ranch, in our debate between you, me, and Nikki, we never even mentioned ranch. And then you posted about it later on, and Ranch was overwhelmingly yeah, it's the top really condiment. The winner. Yeah. yeah. Uh, okay. So what if you mix Ranch and pickles? This is a well-known combination. It's uh, I've seen now. I'm learning now, but this is just not the part of the internet that I live in. Apparently, that people will buy Ranch seasoning and dump it into a jar of pickles, and then mix that all up, and then boom, Ranch pickles. Ooh. I did not know that. Uh, but Not that is me. that is something that people will do. And now the vice versa option is happening. Hidden Valley Ranch has unveiled their new pickle ranch flavor. And this is not an April Fool's joke. This is real. This is sincere. This is an actual product you can buy exclusively at Walmart for a suggested price of $4.88. I have some people do some reviews of this. And they seem pretty positive. They enjoy it? People have liked this so far that I've seen online. Mm-hmm. They said the main thing that they said it was really good with, they said with the with vegetables, they said it's like solid. They said fries. Okay. It that was pretty pretty fries. solid. Fries. Mm-hmm. Fries. They said it was pretty solid with that. I saw someone try a fried pickle with the uh, ranch Whoa. pickle, and they said that was good as well. Pickleception. Yeah, a lot of pickle on. going on. Yeah, I don't... I uh, I mean, again, clearly this is not for me, but that the first thing I was thinking was, what would this, if you did, this was the type of thing you would enjoy, what would you enjoy it on? Yeah. And so I guess vegetables and fries. Is what fries, fried pickles is another one. Uh, I saw someone try a chicken nugget with it. They thought mm. it was pretty good as well. Burgers? Would you do burger? Mm, I guess you could. Yeah. If See, you like ranch on your burgers. I don't know if ranch and burgers, those, those go together. I think so. I think, I mean, if you're a real ranch... Super fan, it goes on everything, right? Yeah, it's fair. So that, it, it makes sense, although maybe that's not the first option. What about a, here's one, ready? Yeah. KFC chicken sandwich. Mm, yeah, that sounds like Or like uh, Chick-fil-A. Just any chicken, chicken sandwich. sandwich. I mean, do you all, You're already putting the pickle on there, you and know? And a lot of people already put ranch on chicken. I mean, mm-hmm. ranch and chicken just goes together. Goes so together. it makes a lot of sense. And just the idea of killing two birds with one stone. Why have a jar of pickles and a jar of ranch when you can just put it all into one safe space in the fridge. If you like it like that. I'm yeah. not a huge pickle guy, so for me, this isn't as enticing, but I know that this caters to a large audience. Yeah. this it just make, It's surprising that it took till 2023 for this to happen. It is. Is actually the case. The Riot Radio U. Little credit where credit is due to a new Guinness World Record holder. Uh, we have a boy from the United Arab Emirates who just got the Guinness World Record for becoming the youngest male ever to publish a book. Four years old, four years, 218 days to be exact. He just published a book. He's four years old. How is that even possible? How is that possible? Maybe his dad is, owns like a publishing house or something. And he's just writing for him too. It could be, especially when I see that uh, his sister currently holds the title for the youngest person to publish a bilingual book how old was she uh seven or something it doesn't say but yeah she bilingual already, she already had that book already had that record locked They're down like, well a little tommy needs something too yeah so uh his name is saeed rashid al mahiri and he uh followed up his younger his older sister by uh, taking the title of the youngest to publish a book. It's called uh, The Elephant, Saeed, and the Bear, if you'd like to ever I bet read the plot that. line is terrible. Probably. It probably is bad. You might be thinking, what does a four-year-old have to say? But think about it. I, I don't know if you've ever read. You were a child once. Children's books? I did used to read, yeah. They don't need to have much of a plot. They don't have to, no. This kid could put anything in there. And uh, actually, that's why I've often thought, I don't know why I haven't written a children's book. 
I think I have a lot to offer for young minds. You think so? I think I could give them at least as much as they're getting out of any other children's book. Yeah, like Green Eggs and Ham. Yeah. Well, I don't know. That's like upper, That's pretty epic. That's upper echelon. I'm not that saying is. I could compete you're, with You can't be rhyming. I don't know. <laughs> that's a whole other Actually, skill. that's all you need to do to publish a children's book is just to be able to put to some be able to rhyme. Together. Yeah, the egg had a peg, and then it had a leg. See, look. There you go. I've got a children's book right there. Uh, so that is, but it is impressive, nevertheless, four years old to be able to write, a, write and publish a book, to have the attention span to write some kind of book, and then to be able to get it published. What, See, we, what were we doing at four years old? My issue with this, and this is a saying I'll take across the board here for a lot of things similar to this. Yeah. Is when children. You're going to criticize a child. I'm going to criticize a child. I'm going to do it. Uh, <laughs> when they have kids like this who are like four years old, yeah. they get something published, right? If I, as a 24 year old man, let's say that I have been working my whole life on uh-huh. publishing a book. If I tried to publish the exact same the book. The elephant Isaiah and the bear. If I tried to publish this exact same book that this four-year-old apparently wrote, yeah. they would for sure turn it down. Because it's like, oh, he's, he's not a child prodigy. So, <laughs> hey, unfortunately, sir, I know that you've been trying to get your book published for 10 years now. Yeah. You're just too old. If you were six, we would publish this. But since you're over the age of 20, it's no longer cool for us to publish your book. You raise a, a, an interesting point. And I actually, I think I have to agree with you. If you tried to publish a book now, a children's book, I don't think it would fly. No shot I would get a I chance. I don't think you could write exactly what this, this boy wrote, and you would not you they would wouldn't, not, no, they wouldn't get off the film. ground at all. Nope. So that is unfortunate, but congratulations to him, though. It's a big accomplishment. The thing now that I wonder is, how do you follow this up? What's he got next for us? He's four years old. What's he going to do at five? It's all downhill from here. Like, what else What else you got? He's got 90 more years where he'll never get a Guinness World Record. I mean, yeah, when you get a Guinness World Record when you're four years old, it's harder to top that the yeah. rest of your life. <laughs> Thanks for watching The Worst of the Riot. Since you made it this far, you might as well like, subscribe, and check out riot.radiou.com for even more, more Riot. riot.